Well, first, tell us about the reopening of the embassy in Kyiv, what the challenges are, and what you see as the, what are the main tasks that you have ahead of you right now? Well, thank you and uh, good evening. Uh, as you said, we reopened the embassy uh, fully this week for the first time since the beginning of uh, war. But we have visited uh, Kyiv several times uh, over the last uh, couple of months. And uh, the only difference this time was that we started providing consular services, which uh, we didn't, uh, uh, we couldn't do uh, over the whole period of uh, uh, the war. So now uh, we started providing the services. It was very important for those Israelis who are currently in Ukraine. And uh, uh, over a couple of days, uh, we assisted. Uh, uh, more than 80 Israelis who are in uh, Kiev with uh, documents, with uh, different uh, kind of uh, consular services. Otherwise, I had uh, several meetings with uh, Ukrainian officials in uh, Kiev, uh, and uh, uh, we're looking forward to uh, be open the embassy fully, but unfortunately, the situation in Kiev is not uh, that stable yet, and the security aspects uh, are still uh, quite complicated. Uh, uh, there are still uh, rocket uh, rocket shelling uh, uh, on Kiev, and uh, during our stay in Kiev, uh, uh, there were several times alarms, and they were to go to the shelter. So it's uh, not uh, uh, it's not back to normal yet. Uh, although the, the, the city itself uh, tries to live normal life and uh, restaurants are now reopened, but everything works um, up until uh, 9 p.m. because it's uh, not allowed to go out uh, after 11 p.m., so people should get home uh, by that time. Uh, and uh, I ho really hope that uh, the city and the whole country will get back to normal as soon as possible, but no one knows exactly what will happen over the next few days, over the next uh, few weeks, and the situation is uh, still uh, quite unpredictable. Right, and Mr. Ambassador, uh, we just heard in the previous report, we again heard President Zelensky ask Israel for more aid, more support, more actions against Russia. Maybe, as our, our correspondent said, the tone was uh, less uh, harsh than, for example, in the Knesset. But we have seen, for example, I'll give you one example, the social media campaign that the uh, Ukrainian embassy in Israel ran earlier this week calling uh, for more aid, more prosthetics uh, supplied from Israel. A lot of people took issue with that. Tell me about your dealings with uh, the Ukrainian officials on this question of aid. I, I believe that, uh, that uh, uh, this division between the civil society and the country of Israel is not fair because the government of Israel has provided amazing and tremendous assistance to the government of Ukraine and is planning to provide more assistance. Just to mention uh, the uh, field hospital that was deployed in Ukraine, just to mention hundreds of, hundreds of tons of uh, medicine and food and uh, water, drinking water and generators. So lots of things that have been provided by the government, not by the civil society, although the civil society, uh, of course, is playing a very important and crucial role in providing assistance to Ukraine. But I believe that Israel as a whole, as the country, is assisting Ukraine, Ukraine massively and will continue to assist Ukraine. Now, as for the uh, requests of the Ukrainian side, obviously the country is uh, in uh, the state of war. Uh, it's a huge uh, human tragedy, and they, they suffer a lot of uh, uh, loss of human lives, and uh, the, the infrastructure is uh, uh, totally ruined, and the economy of Ukraine is ruined. So it's only natural that the Ukrainians are asking for more help, but Israel does what it can and what it can afford, and it will continue to assist Ukraine. And uh, briefly, Mr. Ambassador, you mentioned Israelis in Ukraine. You still have, is there a Jewish population at risk in the war zone, in the easternmost regions? Uh, anything you could tell us about that? Well, I'm not aware of the Israelis who are uh, in uh, uh, those uh, regions directly affected by war, but definitely there are uh, Jews there in all those areas. And the majority of the Jewish population of Ukraine uh, remains in Ukraine. They didn't leave. Although a few thousands have left uh, to Israel and to other countries, probably in Europe, but the majority are uh, still in Ukraine. They stay in Ukraine. Uh, uh, they decided to stay in Ukraine, and they cannot leave because 
Uh, they are uh, men uh, in the age of uh, 18 to 60 and are not allowed to leave the country. Uh, we are in touch uh, with the, the Jewish community leaders. And uh, during this uh, visit to Kiev, I met a couple of them. So uh, the situation is not different right. to the situation of the whole population of Ukraine. They're all suffering from the same uh, problems, uh, Jews and non-Jews. And uh, we're trying to assist. The international uh, Jewish organizations right. are trying to assist. And uh, it's interesting, one of the rabbis in Kiev said that uh, the, uh, popul the, the, the Jewish community has grown uh, since the beginning in Kiev, or at least his community has grown I, I since the beginning of this war, because people uh, we'll, are coming and asking for assistance, for aid. We'll, we'll have and to, that's we'll the have reason to why they We're going to have to leave it at that. We're out of time. Ambassador Michael Brodsky, thank you for joining us. Thank you.